Hey guys, I, uh, it's been a little while since I put a video up, I, um, I've spent the last month, um, a lot of it I've just really been bogged down with work and the last two weeks I've just had this horrendous flu, um, I have not been able to get on here, um, but I'll try today. I just, um, I really just wanted to respond to a few people, um, kind of an, ex uh, I'd lead on from my last video, a quick response, um, <coughs> Sorry, I'm probably going to do this a lot during this video. Um, so people were, I was talking about Jekyll and I um, was getting into the whole static website building craze. Um, and uh, I was kind of showing you how I, I built this, um, this static site using um, Jekyll. And a lot of people, I got two main suggestions. One, and I thought I'd just respond to those suggestions real quick. One was um, Roman Zolotarev's um, uh, static site generator in Bash. And <coughs> um, for those of you who don't know, Roman Zolotarev, he's really active in the BSD community, um, especially OpenBSD. He does some amazing stuff. Um, his site is just full of some of the best tutorials on the internet um, for OpenBSD. And um, he's, just, he's just a minimalist. He's, he's got some really great stuff. So uh, one of the things that he did was he, he created his own little bash script uh, site generator and <coughs> quite a lot of people have, um, <coughs> have uh, recommended, you know, suggested that to me. I, I'm kind of hesitant, my response to that is I'm hesitant to do it because some of my sites have got some, um, have got some really, uh, are quite large, like a lot of pages, a lot of posts, um, and I just, I don't want a situation where a permalink um, setup gets screwed up, where um, some kind of, yeah, I don't, I don't want to screw up linking in any way with that many posts, because it would be a nightmare to fix, um, and that's why, like, <coughs> I think if you've got a, a site of, like, 20 or 30 pages, it's fine, um, I just wouldn't do it for a site where, you know, like one of my sites has got, you know, 770 posts or something. Another one's got thousands. Like, I just, I wouldn't do it um, for that. Just, um, I'd rather go with an existing solution, something that um, builds site structure really well and, and kind of a bit more guarantee. Other than that, I think he's great. Um, the other thing was Hugo. Um, and people have been saying, like, <coughs> so, let me just turn this down. It's just glaring, and I'm kind of <laughs> still got a cold. I just can't handle bright light at the moment. Um, so uh, Hugo is like a, a newer alternative to Jekyll. Um, Jekyll's written in Ruby. Hugo's written in Go, Golang. Um, uh, I've I've kind of been teaching myself Golang over the last few months, and um, I was kind of hesitant to at first because I hate Google. Kind of, it's one of these companies I kind of wish it would do us. Uh, it would just die a slow death. Um, it's done some great stuff, but <coughs> I just can't handle their um, um, their their collusion, their their political collusion. I can't handle their um, biases, but they do some amazing stuff. And and you know, GoLang is a really um, popular language right now. It's got a lot of buzz. And um, yeah, anyway, so I wanted to check out Hugo and just see, like, kind of compare it to Jekyll and see like what what I like about it, what I don't like about it. What I would say, um, so I'll show you, like, it's just very much along the same lines as um, Jekyll. <coughs> so you just, you know, Hugo. Actually, let me let me make a note first for BSD users. If you're using BSD, let's say uh, FreeBSD, uh, the, the package that comes in the FreeBSD repository um, it does not have extended turned on. And, and this is really important because... Um, I didn't know, it took me like almost the whole day to figure this out. <coughs> um, when you go to compile SAS, um, if you use SAS that is, um, it do, it's not verbose, it doesn't tell you that anything's wrong, it just doesn't work. So like you, you like I was, I was doing a lot of styling and, and I'm like, why aren't these, like why isn't this styling showing? Like why, why isn't it working? Like everything seems to work, there are no error messages. Extended was turned off, and I didn't know enough about Hugo in the beginning to realize that you needed it. Um, <coughs> so I had to, um, I had to add it to my Pudria repository and build it and change, um, add the option. Um, you can also just download it and compile it. Um, I did that on OpenBSD as well on my laptop. Um, 
So if you plan on using SAS, then just be aware that you do need to use extended on FreeBSD and it's not on by default. Um, yeah, so you go into the Hugo directory, um, Hugo, I think it's news site, um, let's say <coughs> IBSD, go into the folder, that's your project um, directory structure right there. Um, it by default it doesn't have any theme so you have to either uh, build one or download one um, I was using this one just here um, just for um, I thought of all the ones I tested out this one actually is probably the nicest one I saw so you just basically take the git um, um, clone the git repository there oh what have I done what am I doing oh Whoops. God, wake up, man. Yeah, so clone that. <coughs> and then that will put a the theme in the themes folder there. And you'll see the example site folder um, here. In there, you can actually um, copy. There's a toml file. And copy that to your, to your base. So so now you've got a, a TOML file here. So I'll jump over to, um, I've been playing around with Visual Studio Code lately. Um, I, I much prefer to use uh, my little Vim nerd tree setup. <coughs> I've got it configured just the way I want it. Um, but I've just been playing around with this just because I wanted to kind of see um, see what all the rage was about, all the buzz was about. Um, this is a patched version, by the way. You can't run Visual Studio Code on FreeBSD um, without a bit of um, tweaking, without a bit of hacking. Um, someone's already um, created a patch version of it, thankfully. Um, so yeah, here's the, the config toml file I just copied over. <coughs> <coughs> God, excuse me. Yeah, and, and in there, it's just like in, the, in, um, in Jekyll, you know, you have your config file, your YAML file, and you go through, you add your options. Um, every theme is gonna have a different, uh, gonna ha is gonna have different uh, options here. Um, and then, you know, you basically just, like, here's your, your base, um, your base project, um, layout here, uh, God, what's the word I'm looking for? Folder structure. You can copy, like, if you want to edit, let's say you wanted to edit, um, your, uh, your footer, right? So you would just copy that footer into... You would make a, a partials folder in your layouts and you drag that over or you copy it over to your partials folder in your base. So you, you're basically not <coughs> you're basically not editing um, anything in the themes folder is um, moral of the story. <coughs> God, excuse me. Um, so, uh, so that's basically it. And then, um, yeah, it's just... I, I just find that the Jekyll structure uh, is so much more straightforward. It just makes more sense to me. Um, it's kind of, I, I've kind of been a little frustrated with the way Hugo uh, is um, is laid out. It's sort of unnecessarily complicated. Um, what I do like though is, um, and let me just show you this. If I go, oh, I should go back here and do it. If I show you the... Um, uh, the asset, the way it does asset pipelines um, here. So in Jekyll, um, Jekyll will do this automatically. Actually, um, if you have, if you're using SAS, for example, in Jekyll, and you go to build the site, it will automatically compile that into CSS for you. Um, with Hugo, <coughs> um, with Hugo, you uh, so you've just got your ordinary HTML here. Except in place of the um, the link to the CSS file, uh, file, you're um, you're basically linking to this variable, and in that variable you're getting the SAS fo uh, file, and then you're piping it into these things here. So you're um, using Node.js to convert it to CSS, <coughs> um, and then you're piping that into Minify, and then you're piping that into fingerprint uh, hash so you can you can hash it. So instead of, God, <coughs> sorry guys. Um, uh, so instead of, I mean, I like, I like the condensed 
the the how condensed this is, how how simple and straightforward it is. Obviously, Jekyll, you know, with Jekyll, it's just all automatic. But um, I just I like being able to have a bit more control over this flow. Um, you know, uh, another thing I use with Jekyll and with my WordPress development is um, uh, Grunt. I use Grunt to do basically the same thing. Um, so, <coughs> so this is um, this is really cool. Um, but yeah, the uh, the templating language is uh, obviously a bit of a, a bit of a learning curve compared to Liquid in Jekyll. Um, you know, using GoLang, but um, you know, it's great when you're when you're learning Go just to be doing this, and then it's you know, it's helping your skills, um, helping you uh, learn new skills. So if I, you know, now that I've got that there, what I can do is I can uh, Hugo Server, um, well, capital D. So you can see the drafts, and now it's running. <coughs> um, and then I just basically come over here. I think it's um, what? Did, oh, it's thirteen thirteen. There you go. So and that's that's what I just basically installed. Um, uh, obviously, there's nothing in the posts yet. But you know, if I wanted to add a post, I could just go. Um, what is it? Hugo new it's posts. And then, um, and basically, if I click on post, it will show me that. <coughs> and I can just edit that. Um, I can edit that there, and I can add in. You know, I can add the content. It's exactly the same. Works exactly the same way as Jekyll, um, just slightly different syntax. So that's basically it. I like the fact that it's super fast. <coughs> like, look how um, look how fast it was to 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 serve that in. In Jekyll, if I made a change, it would be like three seconds. With with Hugo, it's you know, mill we're talking milliseconds here. Like it's so much different. But um, yeah, maybe if I had a massive site, that would make a big difference. So, um, but yeah, overall, I probably would stick with Jekyll just because it's got a more sane structure. Um, the uh, the pipeline aspect is uh, is automatic. Even though I like the way that Hugo does it, it's um, it's one it's one more step. So. Yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. I mean, if you if you if you prefer Hugo, I'd like to know why. Like, what what do you uh, what about Hugo do you prefer? So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm still learning this, guys. I'm not. Uh, um, my next big project, <coughs> the thing I want to learn. Um, uh, the reason why I'm doing GoLang is I'd like to actually build a website in Go, like 100% in Go, no Hugo. Um, build a web app and and you know add some dynamic features to it. Um, that's kind of what I want to work on. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, as I said, if you're uh, if you're on BSD, then uh, you want to uh, make sure that you've got extended turned on if you plan on using SAS. Um, spare you that headache. That's it. Thanks, guys.